Hey, I'm going to just take a couple of minutes and go over the mechanics of the uh, t-table. So we're looking at the one sample t-test and we have let's say a sample size of 30. The degrees of freedom will be sample size minus 1, so that'll be 29 degrees of freedom. Well if we have a 95% confidence interval, we'll just go here to 90% and then just Go on down to 29 degrees of freedom, and you'll see a T value of 2.045. So if you had a sample size of 16 and a 90% confidence interval, you would go to N minus 1 or 15 and a 90% confidence interval to get 1.753. If you scroll on down here, you'll see this goes on up to 100. And actually, if you know if we had enough space it could go further than that as well but we'll stop there you will also notice that if you and this is where we will use the t table not just to get t values but also for z values so if you're doing a, um, a one proportion z interval or if you're doing a interval for one mean and you have population standard deviation don't correct for degrees of freedom in those cases if it's a z just come down to this bottom row so for a 90% confidence interval, you'll have 1.645. For a 95%, 1.96. 98% confidence, 2.326. And 99%, 2.576. And depending on when you're watching this, you would have seen that in one of my uh, videos as common values for Z. And those will be the only Z values that we'll use in here. Keep in mind, only correct for degrees of freedom when you have sample standard deviation and you're using a T interval or later on a T test. If you're doing a test of proportions, it's always Z. If you're doing a confidence interval or a test involving the mean and you have the population standard deviation, then go down to the Z value. Do not correct for degrees of freedom under that uh, in that case.